Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to do some problems that necessitate your using the compound interest formula. And here it is, A equals P, parentheses, 1 plus R over N, parentheses closed, to the N T power. What this means is money accumulated over time after you put P dollars in an interest-bearing account. R is the interest rate, uh, written in decimal form. N is the number of compounding periods, how many times per year your money is, your interest is calculated and added to uh, the principal and then to the previous principal and the previous principal and so on, all to the N times T power. So here's our first problem, which is problem number 25 in your homework. How much money will there be in an account at the end of four years if $9,000 is deposited at 7% interest compounded semi-annually? Well, for this problem then, P is the $9,000 that was deposited, T is four years, R is 0 .07, which is 7% written as a decimal, and N is 2 because semi-annually the number of compounded, com compounding periods is 2. Semi-annually means 2. So we take these numbers, we fill them, we fill them in here. 9,000 times 1 plus 0 .07 over 2 to the 2 times 4 power. It's very important that you follow order of operations here. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Work in the parentheses first. 1 plus 0 .07 divided by 2 is 1.035. Now take this number and raise it to this power. 2 times 4 is 8, so I'm raising 1.035 to the 8th power. That gives me this number. Then I multiply by my P number last. So when I multiply these, what I get is $11,800 11, $11,851.28. This is problem number 26 on your homework on Melissa's sixth birthday. She gets a $5,000 CD that earns 7% interest compounded quarterly. Quarterly is four times per year. If the CD matures on her 13th birthday, how much money will be available? Well, for this problem, our P is going to be 5,000. R is still 0.07. T. Now, how many years is it going to be in the bank from her sixth birthday to her thirteenth birthday? So that'll be seven years. And N equals four for the number of compounding periods. I take these numbers and I put them in for the letters in the formula. I carefully follow order of operations. That's what I get when I say 1 plus 0 .07 divided by 4. Raise it to the 28th power, excuse me, which is 4 times 7. That raised to that power, that is 1.0175 raised to the 28th power, is this very ugly decimal, which I multiply by P5000 and I get $8,127.06 that Melissa, uh, with her parents' consent, will be able to withdraw on her 13th birthday. I think she should leave it in the bank until she goes to college, but no one is asking me. Here's problem number 27 in your homework. 
Suppose that $10,000 is invested at 7% again. I don't know how I came up with so many 7% and I hope when you do these problems you'll at least have a different percent. Anyway, we've got $10,000. We're investing it at 7% for two years at an interest that is compounded annually. Annually means only once a year. So P equals 10,000, R equals 0 0.07, N equals 1, and T equals 2. I put these numbers in the formula, work them out using order of operations, and I come up with this amount of money. $11,449. Now, this is a two-part problem. Problem number 28 in your homework. Use the compound interest formula. A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power to compute the total amount after $3,000 is invested at 5% interest over seven years, compounded daily, every day, and we're being told to let n equal 365. Then compute the interest earned. Okay, so three th uh, our P is $3,000, our interest rate is 5%, which is 0 0.05, N is 365 and the number of years is 7. 7 times 365 is 2,555. What an exponent! So I calculate the number inside the parentheses. I then raise it to the 2,555th power. I then last multiply by the P number and I come up with $4,257.10. Now, we're asked another question. Not only do we have to compute the accumulated amount of money, but we have to com uh, compute the amount of interest earned. Uh, the interest earned is going to be the difference between what we put into the bank and what we're taking out of the bank. We're taking out more. How much more? $1,257.10 more. So this was the interest we earned over those seven years. A country produced 6.7 billion gallons of fuel ethanol in 2005. The production of corn-based ethanol has increased exponentially from only 1 billion gallons in 1995. The following function can be used to model the growth. That is, you can estimate how many billion gallons of uh, ethanol fuel are produced every year after 1995 with this formula, where T is the number of years since 1995. So for instance, 1996 would be year 1, 1997 would be year 2, 1998 would be year 3, and so on. 2007 would be year 12, and 2010 would be year 15. We're being asked to calculate the amount of fuel oil, uh, fuel ethanol produced 12 years after 1995 and 15 years after 1995. All right, so in 2007, I use these numbers. I use order of operations and I come up with 8 billion uh, gallons of, fuel, of ethanol fuel. In 2010, I use order of operations, raising 1.1887 to the 15th power, then multiplying by 1.0039, and I come up with 13.4 billion gallons of ethanol. Okay. Talk to you later.